welcome to information that concerns Cameroonians in and around the country. This is Cameroon Today, and I am Bibiana Shinitamvuma. Let's begin with the headlines. Around 20 non-financial service providers have accredited by the agency for the promotion of small and medium-sized enterprises to reduce the financial burden on entrepreneurs. Also coming up, parents have been called upon to see to the establishment of birth certificates for their children in Garabulai to facilitate their education of evaluation. And finally, we look at the sports story in the second segment of our news edition, where the results of the Chantabia Grand Prix has been made known. You are welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We begin this news edition with this good news on our economic page. The Agency for the Promotion of Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises has accredited, of course, it has accredited around 20 people, that's 20 service providers, to reduce the financial burden on entrepreneurs. Small and medium-sized enterprises in the agricultural and agri-food sector will now only pay 10% of the cost of non-financial service from these approved service providers in order to accelerate their development. Details with Peter and Sosie. About 20 non-financial service providers in the agri-food sector have been accredited by the Small and Medium-Sized Enterprise Promotion Agency. The aim of the accreditation, supported by the French Development Agency, is aimed at reducing financial burden on entrepreneurs. The move is timely. We are also carrying out a kind of disruptive, innovative approach to business development services, making sure that experts who are in the field are those who are going to give out capacity building to SMEs who are also in the field. These providers will now pay only 10% of the cost of a non-financial service to accelerate their development and also enable them to deal with standards, quality and product structuring issues. The selection of the companies is rigid. Uh, they have certain criteria which they they look to, to, to select this enterprise in terms of registration. You must be registered. You must have a product already that has been tested in the market. You must have a product that, is, that has a good utility. If not, uh, it becomes difficult for you to be selected. Government, through the Small and Medium Size Promotion Agency, hopes that SMEs in the country can be more competitive in the global market and also meet the exigencies of import substitution. You can still see it there. Let's stay on the economic page, as for some time now, Cameroonians have been grappling with the increase in interurban and intraurban transportation fares. For a period of one year, transportation fares are said to have risen by 16.8%. This, according to the National Institute of Statistics, is attributed to the increase in fuel prices implemented at the start of the year. Return Zinia. Data from the National Institute of Statistics indicate that between August 2022 and August this year, transportation fares have witnessed an increase of 16.8%, an increase which the body blames on the increase in fuel prices. According to the price list set by the government in the month of February 2023 and recommended by the International Monetary Fund, the price of a liter of super rose from 630 francs CFA to 730 francs CFA. That is an increase of 100 francs CFA, while a liter of diesel, which was previously sold at 527 francs CFA, today sells at 720 francs CFA, an increase of 145 francs CFA. It is worth recalling that on February 16 this year, the government reviewed taxi fares in the country. Transportation during the day rose from 250 francs CFA to 300 francs, while night fares skipped from 300 francs CFA to 350 francs CFA. Regarding hiring taxis, the fare went from 2,000 to 2,500 francs CFA in the day and from 2,500 to 3,000 francs CFA at night, a situation the National Institute of Statistics fears may skyrocket due to the high demand of transportation services observed during the academic year, thereby affecting the inflation rate of the country which currently stands at 7.8%. Thank you, Ritanzinia. Now, this may surprise you, but 
France's purchase of the liquefied natural gas from Cameroon exploded to 304.2 billion francs EFA in the first half of this year, that's 2023. Now, over the first six months, France has already exceeded the amount injected by 108 billion francs EFA during the year 2022 in purchases of liquefied natural gas produced in Cameroon. Nadine Mebune has the details in this one. Going by data from French Customs, cited in a report to the Directorate General of Treasury of the French Ministry of Economy, France has carried out operations from the six countries of the CEMAC zone, global import amounting to 966 million euros during the first half of 2023. These purchases increased by 82.6 million euros year on year, were mainly boosted by natural gas purchase in Cameroon. Over the first six months of 2023, France has already exceeded by 108 billion francs CFA, the amount injected during the year 2022 in the purchase of liquefied natural gas produced in Cameroon. According to data from the Directorate General of Treasury of the French Ministry of Economy, in 2022, LNG imports from Cameroon had peaked at only 196.2 billion francs CFA. Experts say it is very likely that France has turned to Cameroon to replace part of its imports of natural gas from Russia, a country hit by an embargo after the invasion of Ukraine in February of 2022. This is Cameroon Today on Dash News. According to Nanterre, France has ordered the financial rubber company dubbed Sockfin a pay to pay of course 140 million euros, actually 140,000, an equivalent of 92 million francs CFA. 145 local residents of a palm oil plantation operated by Soka Palm in Kribi, south region of Cameroon. The court ruling comes as Sockfin failed to respect a 2022 order by the Vessel Court of Appeal to provide copies of its meeting as a parent company following complaints against its subsidiary. Linda Obumike tells us more. The rubber financial company, dubbed Sokfin, a parent company of Soka Palm, has been ordered to pay 140,000 euros, that is an equivalent of 92 million francs CFA, to 145 Cameroonians living in a palm oil plantation in Kribi, south region of Cameroon. The Nanterre court's decision is a step towards victory for the local population who have since 2010 filed a case against Tokapam denouncing non-respect of their right to access their land and the pollution of the surrounding nature. In addition to the 140,000 euros, Sokfin will also pay 4,000 euros for every day it fails to present a copy of its general meetings to the plaintiff. At the end of 2022, the Versailles Court of Appeal ordered Sokapam and Sokfin, of which Bolloré is a shareholder, to provide copies of the minutes of their general meeting. Based on the 2017 Law on Duty of Vigilance of French Multinationals, it obliges parent companies to ensure that their subsidiaries, direct or indirect, their subcontractors and suppliers, respect human rights, fundamental freedoms, health, personal safety and the environment. Linda Obumneke. Now, the need for parents to ensure the production of birth registration certificates for their children has been a major target of educational stakeholders in Cameroon. This is the case in Garwapulai, a Cameroonian town bordered to the Central African Republic, where teachers have decried a lack of birth certificates among children as a major setback for proper evaluation. Basini Banini Tombo reports. The birth registration certificate is critical for the establishment of a child's legal proof of identity. Without it, children are invisible to their government and likely to miss out on their right of being protected and upheld, as well as essential services like health care and education. In Cameroon's border town with Central African Republic, Garoua Bulai, heads of primary schools have difficulty monitoring students due to the lack of birth certificates. Based on last year's situation, for example, we registered 411 students, of whom around 45 had birth certificates. Even now in school, we have children with no birth certificates, and it's challenging to follow up. This is the problem that holds children back when it comes to examinations. And I remember of the 26 candidates I had to present last year, I presented just 17. 
Not far from there, on the Gawa Blai Menganga axis, other measures have been taken by administrative authorities to curb this situation. But they say parents have to take the responsibility of ensuring the registration of their children. The mayor of Gawa Bulai, Adamu Abdon, whom together with other administrative and academic stakeholders in the region, championing for parents to produce birth certificates for their children, says the situation is glaring as their efforts are yet to achieve results that they wish to see. Now, do you know that once upon a time a tray of eggs did not cost up to a thousand francs? Well, that's story for another day. Now, if you're a consumer of eggs, you must have realized that the prices have been fluctuating for the past few months now in sales point. A tray of average size eggs that usually cost 2,000 francs now goes for 2,500 and above. Audrey Zadza paid a visit to Marche de New Daido to understand why the increase for producers. Her report. Three eggs at 250 francs CFA, two at 175 francs. A tray of eggs now sells from 2,000 francs to 2,400 and 2,500 francs upwards for small sizes and large sizes, respectively. This is the reality on ground at Marche New Daido for eggs that used to cost 75 francs each. A difficult reality for consumers, especially for hawkers selling boiled eggs. I just sell the eggs because I don't want to stay at home. The price of eggs have gone up so much so that we don't even get a profit on them. You buy a tray at 2,500. The high cost of eggs, which has been observed for the past few months in Douala, is being attributed to rising cost of chicken feeds owing to a shortage of maize, which is a major material for the chicken feeds. Most of the people, they say it is because the feet, that's the elementary products that they use to formulate the feet, they have become so expensive, like the concentrates and all the like in the market. And even with the other normal uh, products like maize, soybeans. The prices in the market, however, equally depend on each seller. I send the money to the poultry farmers to send me the eggs, and when they do so, they raise the price, which is why I sell at a high price. With the persistent increase in the price of this nutritious, convenient and complete protein, consumers are certain something must be done. Now we bring back the story from the East Region, where the Baka indigenous people, known for their immense tropical forests, live. Their main source of livelihood, hunting and fishing. In order to protect them as well as the nature around them, Jules Dore Ndongo, the Minister of Forest and Wildlife, has insisted on renewing the agreement which was signed in 2006. But now it's expired. Let's find out the more on the content of this agreement in this report. Alerting the Baka people to the dangers of poaching is one of the main objectives of Jules Dore Ndongo. Through an agreement which was signed with this indigenous people of the southeastern forest. Through the voice of the Minister of Forest and Wildlife, the Cameroonian government reflects a firm desire to protect the interests of these men and women who are often marginalized. A first agreement was signed in 2006 with numerous shortcomings. This time, it is a question of doing things well. The situation of the Baka community concerns everyone, making a livelihood mainly from fishing and hunting. It is surrounded by a typical forest which constitutes a real asset. The representative, through the voice of the population, thanked the government for the value and importance it attaches to them. We want a technical assistance to the midfork, to the government in general, but in particular to the midfork and Minas on these uh, human rights issues. So, given our permanent presence in the field and our agenda to foster uh, inclusive conservation, we take what our experience in the field to advise them in hope, also advise the communities at the local level. The exchange of initials between the two parties took place in the presence of the Secretary General of the Ministry of Social Affairs, Mayors and Governors of the East Region. The ceremony, which was garnished by musical sounds of those people proud of their tradition and culture. You are welcome back to the continent. That is how Cameroon is fondly called these days. Now, regardless whether your breast is large or tiny, your breast 
are perfect as long as they're healthy. We are in the month of October, and who says October? Says Pink October, which is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Danielle Marisa Sama is a promoter of the Pink October Walk, an initiative to help patients suffering from breast cancer combat the illness. She shares with Audrey Zadza for Dash News her experience in helping these patients. Let's watch, please. Hello, my name is Daniela Sama. I'm 46 years old. I'm a Cameroonian living in Douala. And I am the managing director of This is a company making events, who is making events for women by women. Why did I start at Marshalls? If I do remember, it was in 2017. A few la years later, I had someone suffering from breast work cancer in my family. And seeing her struggling with that illness made me realize that I have to do something. I have a company, I'm helping women, uh, and I said, okay, let me start something that will make, make people realize that the illness is real. It's not coming from uh, some village, or it's not something that you can buy. But if you, if you have some tips, you can prevent yourself at least from dying from the breast wall cancer. That's why I started uh, La Marche Rose. And also, I thought, I said to myself that I have to help people. So the first thing was helping, sensitizing people about breast cancer, and then help people um, who are always, who are almost suffering from breast cancer. Martial arts is just the beginning of what we are, we are doing uh, about um, breast, breast cancer. You have these pink, pink buckets. You have to know that when you buy one ticket and participate to La Marche Rose, at La Marche Rose, you contribute to offer one pink bucket to some patients. In that pink bucket, we will put so much more project that will help him, her, uh, at least to get a fast recover. We're going to, to help him, the, the patient, with some natural cream for the skin, for the, um, for the, um, the hair, and even some tea to boost the immunity. That's what we're doing. And we, this, starting from last year, we, we started buying some psychotherapists to talk with some patients because we find it so difficult to them. They have, some people have no one to talk to. That's, so the marshals is just a part of what we're doing to help patients. Creative is well received by women and patient. When we started at Marshall Rose, it was so difficult to find patients who were supposed to come and participate to that event. There was, everyone was shy. There was a shame. They were ashamed to, to talk about the, that illness. Four years later, when I see how we work with that um, association, that patient association, and how I see them getting involved, more involved in the organization of La Marche Rose, talking to people. Uh, I think this initiative is well received from patients, from patients. Cameron today takes you abroad to Zoom in on Dr. Kenneth Nsamala, an English-French poet, educationist, and researcher. Under the pen name Nsamala, he has published five poetry books and two picture books. He is a multi-award winning expert in English and French literature. He has worked across countries and cultures, but still has the desire to give back home. Let's now hear from native of Mbesa in the Northwest region. He's here. Hello, I am uh, Dr. Kenneth Nsa, 
uh, popularly known as Nsa Mala. I'm a poet, I'm a writer, I'm a children's author, and I'm also uh, an interdisciplinary researcher and scholar. I have a PhD in comparative literature and environmental humanities. And uh, I write a lot in the different categories, including even journalism and uh, climate communication. And my research focuses on cultural and literary studies in English and French and other languages like my indigenous Mbasa language. And uh, I do um, focus a lot of my attention through my uh, research, but also my creative writing and other endeavors on addressing global challenges such as climate change and biodiversity loss. And that is why the Congo Basin is at the very heart of a lot of what I do. A lot of my research activities are focused on seeing how we can preserve the Congo Basin for our good and the good of humanity. And yeah, uh, being in the diaspora, of course, there are always challenges. First, one is always sick of home. And sometimes, yeah, there can be growing tensions, growing geopolitical tensions that also frighten people. Uh, yeah. And of course, uh, and you know, like today, increasingly, we live in a world that is very, very much uh, globalized and interconnected. And so a conflict or a problem in one corner and definitely in one way or other affects people in other corners of the world. But uh, before I put uh, an end to maybe to this point about uh, challenges of living in the diaspora, I think that one of the fundamental uh, challenges of uh, living in the diaspora is not just missing home, as I earlier said, but also uh, the social dimension because life is completely different for us uh, in Cameroon as it, uh, as compared to uh, European and American countries or North American countries, for example. Uh, there is generally a very good sense of community and belonging uh, when one is at home as compared to when you are not at home. And so other challenges, therefore, would be like loneliness to an extent, of course. Uh, yeah, but I think it's also the time now for me to, to mention some of the challenges that are a little related to the work that I do in terms of research, you know, because the climate emergency uh, and the environmental uh, crisis are global and local at the same time. What is happening is that now, because there are lots of tensions and conflicts across the globe, whether we're thinking about Russia and Ukraine, or whether we're think, thinking about um, other parts of the world, obviously the truth is that all these things have an impact. Because if we take even the recent global health crisis of the COVID-19, we would see that all of these, uh, the wars, the, 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 the tensions, they contribute to um, making or turning attention away from uh, things that need urgent uh, attention or need uh, uh, yeah that need more concerted efforts like the climate crisis and so and that of course affects also researchers and now uh, having said so i don't think that i have too much <laughs> in terms of advice to uh, my young uh, brothers and sisters as Cameroonians and perhaps maybe other Africans, whether they're at home or abroad, I think the most important thing is that we have to continue to put our skills, our talents, and our knowledge, or even knowledges, whether it is classical knowledge from Western education or indigenous knowledge, that we, we continue to put these things at the service of humanity, at the service of our nation, and uh, so that we can be able to build a present that is livable, a present, a present in which everybody is living in peace and in harmony, but also, of course, thinking about future generations. Yeah, because here I think it's uh, important that I should also say that um, I do not only focus on environmental humanities and issues of sustainability and climate change and biodiversity laws, but I also focus on issues of uh, futures and foresight. And I think it's important that we young people, we take charge of our today, not just tomorrow. And to do so, we have to equip ourselves uh, with um, the tools and skills 
to shape the futures that we want, partly for us, but also mostly for our children. Because I think, yeah, more and more we are coming to the conclusion that uh, the whole thing about youth and leaders of tomorrow is something that is not always true. We can also be leaders now in our various uh, domains. And so I will exhort each and every one of us to continue to work hard, to continue to be organized, to set goals, to go after them, and to remember that there will always be challenges. But at the end of it all, at the end of it all, we can always succeed. And there are beautiful examples of successful Cameroonians, whether in the diaspora or at home, whether we're thinking in the domains of sport, whether we're thinking in the domains of education and science, whether we're thinking in the domains of uh, agriculture, we, we have good examples of Cameroonians to look up to, and we should also not only look up to them, but aspire to be like them so that we can build a greater nation, a greater continent, and of course, a greater world. So thank you so much. You must have, for one reason or another, visited a public institution in Cameroon, yeah? Well, the staff in these offices most often than not do not meet the expectation of Cameroonians. How do I know this? Well, through Cameroonians themselves, in this case, Douala city dwellers. But we all know that in every situation, there is always an exception, of course. While popular opinion holds that staff in public offices do not meet up, they immediately need to ameliorate their manner of approach towards those who need their services, others find no problem at all in that domain. Nelly Lapa compiled some of these reactions, as you see in the segment, Street Talk. Watch. I be very sorry, Sidi will country, be very so poor. When you reach a police station for make ID, the woman that just treat you very badly, they go make you sit down the whole day, you lost your own job site. Just because you come only for simple ID card. Only for simple ID card. So I be very sorry for this country. So I plead the government for trying to arrange this problem for ID card. No simple ID card go make me I go lost two days from my, from my job site. You go go to my just to say, yes, that's why I see. Come and sit here. I just came to make an ID card, I don't come to come and query. I don't come to come and fight. I come to come make ID. But now you don't be not the one with a query. Do man the police, now you walk where you come for can walk. But they say they'll be beating and we can't me go into that work. So I'll be very so I plead the government. Me they arrange this thing for the country very fast before it won't be late. Some offices in Cameroon have been treating people badly. To receive them actually. When I say badly, I mean uh, maybe bribery or giving some money before they receive them. But actually for me, I've never been on any office in Cameroon and have treated me badly. Yeah, so that's it. I've never been, so I don't know why. I don't know, but I've been treating people badly. But I've never treated me badly anywhere. When you come uh, to office, like public office, you need service. Well, they know the welcome you were. Because sometimes you don't have money or because you not dress well, something like that. But if you come, say, they tell the, now this person will send you some personality, they will receive you and they will treat you well. So that you need to correct your way to receive people any place, any office, any uh, public office. Well, for me, the service in Cameroon, I have experienced many things that I know we're going the right. Because when we go to the public service, for a service, we're supposed to be free. Sometimes there seems to be uh, holding for you to propose maybe maybe a something to do with people. So for me, um, I think uh, things have been it's coming, it's coming worse, worse, because uh, what we did yesterday is not what we are, we are doing today. For me, for example, I make, when I went to make my ID card, I experienced the first day they did not receive me because they say I came late. I don't know when they come at 6 o'clock, they say I am late. Oh, the public service sometimes uh, open at uh, 8, 8 yet. So that day I went back. The next day I was supposed to be there before 4 o'clock. So I arrived 4 o'clock. It's where they came around 6.30, they took my document. And I went for three to four years to get my, my ID card. At least I got my ID card after four years. 
what I'm doing, I can say, is that in this country, eh, we, we are not happy because of what is happening in our offices. Our people working in the office are not doing a good job. Because when you are arrive in some office, people are give you a condition that you will not afford to the condition. And those people in the office put money in front than to do their, their job and was were not satisfied. When you come to office from some fish, you know get to facilitate to get what you need. So that you come to get you need energy card for policy. They need money, they need that money. I don't concern them to, to, to make sure you get that, that, that energy card. They give you a recipe card after you know it's not you know you not. You know, you know. So we are not in that. You need a change. When they, they come for them, they take the care. They know they need that energy card, it's very important. They need a money, no, it's not for money for them, but to get that identity card. Like me, I don't lose my, my free cash. I need my identity card since it, and it's not, it's not out. You don't get them. And they don't, they don't, they don't have me one more day, day for that identity card. They don't, they, they, they take money when they cash you for, for, for an Amiri. They don't know if you get point for get your identity card. Or oh, you come to the, the office, you pay all things, but you know, they don't, they don't make you satisfied. The online community is in a constant fuss, making the buzz from the slightest to the largest. Someone has been keeping tabs on this community and is here in the studio with us. Darling Leonga, hello and welcome to the club, Miss Social Media Echoes. How are you doing? I don't even know where you're smiling with me, girl. Like I, I told you, sure you, if there's can't. no screen goddess, I'm not talking to you. So oh, fix the it. screen goddess, of course. How could I forget? No, you're talking. <laughs> yes. Uh, first of all, Viviana, I want to appreciate you. Like, girl, you just raised the bar so high. I was just admiring the way you were um, anchoring the news. It's so beautiful. I mean, you don't make making news news. You get it? Like, it's not boring. It's so engaging. Like, you're doing a great job, first. Thank of all, you, I love what you're doing. Mm -hmm. You know, if I literally had flowers next to me, I would have handed it to you. Like, girl, take. Oh, coming like, from the screen goddess, I am grateful. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. You told me something about TZ Panchak. Mm -hmm. okay. I did. Well, um, it's good news, bad news. Now it, it depends on how you want to take it. So, um, TZ Panchak is one of her best alias artists in the industry. You know, he's a front artist for Blue Nations. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, we could say he's one of the richest urban artists. Like, he's been touring the world. Like, bro, bro, just from one private jet from one plane to the other oh, yeah. if it's not meeting internationals like uh, rick ross and, and the others oh, yeah. he's traveling he's building he's buying cars he's, he's building mansions and all yeah, oh, yeah. but then um, um what is really peculiar about um tizzy panchak is the fact that for the past three years yeah. he keep losing family members oh, no. the year 2021 he lost his father it was a very sad moment and he really cried now um the likes of stanley i know they had to accompany him to his town um, um kumba what is it about me now no okay. <laughs> yeah, no don't blur me bro okay yeah so they went to uh, kumba you know to pay their last respects and all and then last year 2020 just we were like okay you know what um it's time for him to recuperate for him to heal and move on you know with his career as an artist and all Boom, he lost his mother. And that was another that shocker. Painful, yeah. I know, girl. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, we didn't even know where to start from, you know. And then you notice the Panchak, you could call him a situational artist. His kind of songs are not songs like maybe I just bought a car or um, a private jet. Yeah. He's always talking about poverty, about suffering. Oh. So when all of this is just keep happening, like, oh, bro, he's going to drop another sorrowful song. And yeah. he dropped another one, you know. And uh, this, it, this one is titled Last Last. So, well, okay, cool. We can really understand that you're going through a, a, a mm. lot right now and all. Yeah. And we sympathize with him. Mm. And now this year, 2023, that's really been great for him. You know, okay. he got himself a brand new Range Rover. Like, bro, you need to see that car like this. And then he got a whole lot of um, endorsement deals. You know, he's currently working with Rick Ross, the American rapper. You yeah. don't say. I'm telling you, baby. That is like, beautiful. Yes. So just what we felt like, okay, everything is happening well for Tizzy Panchak. A couple of months ago, he lost his brother. Oh, my God. That you is see? 
for like three years, years consecutively. Mm -hmm. He just keeps losing a family mm -hmm. member. So mm -hmm. apparently he died in um, Dubai, and it was another sad moment for us. So everybody was like, what's going on? Yeah. Like, this is Panchak, are you okay? You know, mm -hmm. like, bro, like, are you how fine? How is he holding up? Yeah. You get it? Like, mm -hmm. how are you coping with all the losses and everything? And then in the press um, release, you know, he kind of did like a mini press conference, and mm -hmm. he said, I'm now an orphan. Oh. Now that phrase, it triggered a whole lot of people. Yeah. Like, I mean, he just made people love him even more. Yeah. You get it? Like, mm -hmm. in as much as he's talented, of course, he has fans because of his talent, but now yeah. the fact that he's an, he's an orphan and all, mm -hmm. it just make Cameroonians to just triple their love mm -hmm. for him. Like, he's been getting a whole everybody lot of attention. Be his family. You get it? Like, yeah. Everybody wants to be his family mm -hmm. and all. So, currently, Tizi Panchak is in Lagos, Nigeria, and okay. he's having the fun of his life. Like, bro, bro, he's just partying everywhere. That is beautiful. So, amidst all of that, he is still able to have his head above water. Yes. Is and um, I mean, we, we saw pictures of him with police officers as his bodyguard. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Not, not everybody's opportunity to have uniform people. You Burning can imagine, him, the, yes. you can imagine yes. the kind of money to see Panchak has, like, maybe <laughs> you are swimming in it in his range of a place. <laughs> wow, the way you put it like that, like, <laughs> it makes it even more sweet, right? I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's it. So, we are looking forward to his new release. By the way, he dropped a song, it's titled Paradise, and it was dedicated to um, his okay, lost brother. brother huh? You see, so it's another sorrowful song. Like, if you watch it, it's a great speech. By the way, shout out to you, Tizi Panchak, you're an amazing artist. But then again, Vivi, when you listen to you, you're going to remember all the people you've lost, even the ones your mom told you. Yeah. You get it? So it, it, it's like that. Anyways, I want to talk about something else. Ah, you're right on. Social media yeah. is a dark place, or the entertainment industry. Yeah. Now, every young star that you might talk to right now will tell you, I want to be an artist. Yes. I want to be a music producer. Mm -hmm. I want to be an engineer, a video mm -hmm. vixen. Mm -hmm. But now they don't get to know the dark side of social of the entertainment industry. Okay. It's not as open as you think. It's not all about going to a studio and mm -hmm. recording a song. Mm -hmm. And they're probably praying for God to send you a good record label to sign you. Mm -hmm. Like, baby, a whole lot of things are happening behind the scenes, you see. Mm -hmm. So one of our best... Um, um, senior pastor. Yes. How much of comedy do you know, though? Um, at least I know senior pastor and a few <laughs> a handful of others. <laughs> Baby Anna. Oh yes. Aside from senior pastor, name another one. Um, boy. Oh boy. Oh, okay. <laughs> one for me, that's good, that's good. Yes, oh, about a comic. Mm. Okay, so um, Senior Pastor in the viral video said yeah. that the entertainment industry is a very dark place, that a lot is happening. It's either you belong to a secret place Okay. Or a sacred place. Oh, yeah, okay. He's, yeah. okay. He's I, hope, I hope you get that. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So to him, his definition of secret place mm -hmm. is God. Mm -hmm. Because he, he he's a Christian, he believes in God, so he's always going to church. He makes sure that he pays his tithe, you know, he attends services. Even when he cannot, he, makes, he endeavors mm -hmm. to follow like online services and all. You get like yeah. prayer, worship, and everything. Mm -hmm. So he has chosen the secret place, which is God. So if you if you know you're not a Christian or you don't believe in God, because I know there are people like that, yes, then you must belong to a sacred place because it's either you're killed or you get killed. Mm -hmm. The streets are so cold outside, you understand? Like, bro, nobody's joking with you. <laughs> you guys, so it, it goes beyond... The the, the 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 whatever you see, it yes. goes beyond seeing Tizi Panchak mm -hmm. jumping from one private jet to another, from one car to another. Mm -hmm. It's deeper, deeper than that. So now the question is, are you ready for that? That is a question. Are you ready, yeah? Yeah. You get it. So to those of you who want to get into the entertainment industry, you have to, first of all, you have to kill your mental health. Like, baby, you better, real mm. quick. Oh. Two weeks ago, I wasn't friendly on my side, baby girl. Like okay. I woke up, my pictures were everywhere. Oh, <laughs> I, I think I'm trying to understand that you now. Did. Yes. <laughs> so I got into this little <laughs> argument with um, a rapper in the industry, Tila. Mm -hmm. And baby, trust me, the streets are cold. That's to tell that the entertainment mm -hmm. industry is for those who do not have mental health. You get it. Yes. If you know you're very emotional, if you know you're weak, mm -hmm. if you know you cannot withstand, you don't have a thick skin, mm -hmm. don't go there. Just forget about it. <laughs> forget about it. Okay. Yeah. So now my question for you before I go is, Bibi, if you were not um, a journalist, if you were not anchoring the news, mm -hmm. right, what would you have been? Mm, maybe a pilot. Huh? Yeah, it's funny, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm looking at your height, girl. Are you sure? <laughs> oh, yes. I don't need the height for that. So, yes, why not? <laughs> well, that's a good dream, though. But you're doing an amazing job, by Thank the way. You. Like, Thank uh, you I'm literally blushing. Like, I'm watching you, and I feel like it's me, you know? Okay. Yeah, and then it feels awkward because 
Normally, when I'm doing a matinal, mm -hmm. I'm the one hosting you. Okay, I'm and now the tables have turned, right? Girl! <laughs> you are right. And that, of course, is Darlene Younger. Yeah. She is who she is, and she's, of course, a screen goddess who has given us all the information. She's a goddess. That's why we're able to get all of that information from her. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we will be moving over to another edition. We're talking about sports. How on earth can you talk Cameroon without talking sport? So this, of course, is a sport which reflects flex our country. You know, the continent is some way they used to call a Cameroon. They call it the continent, which was gotten, of course, during the period of the World Cup. How else can we get this reflection without having a good chat with our sportsman, Jirel Batinga? Welcome on the platform, Jirel. Shinita, it is a great pleasure to be here once more uh, to share with our fellow viewers what is making headlines in the world of sports. Okay, you're welcome. Now, what is making headlines in the world of sports, like you say? We have a lot going on in the Cameroon sporting landscape, precisely the Elite One Championship, mm -hmm. where match day one resumes after the end of the Super Cup finals, where Cotton Sport of Garoa defeated Fufu of Baham at the Reunification Stadium. It was on a Sunday, but even exciting, mm -hmm. coming back to elite football business, it is Aigle Royal de la Menua who paid the visit to the Royal Majesty of Bafo Kingdom to get their blessings, or to get his blessings as they are poised to make the their lead one return uh, where they will take on Astres, a football a club. Bibiana, a quick one for you. Do you believe in the blessings of the gods, as they call it in the African context? Of course I do, like the ring. And so does Egan <laughs> Royal I will visit his uh, Royal Highness uh, Fu and Dong Victor Kana III of uh, Bafo uh, Village, where they were at his uh, palace, of course, uh, to tap the blessings of the gods. What better way to kick off the lead one football season than to get the permission from the gods of football uh, themselves, as Egle Royal will have the full blessings of the gods when they take on Astres of uh, Douala that will be on Wednesday, October 4, 2023, Bibiana Shinita. Now that is beautiful, but you tell me something more about the MT Elite One. Exactly, we have the full match day uh, one fixtures coming up on October 4 and 5 in uh, across uh, Cameroon. We shall have exciting fixtures to be played on October 4 and 5. To those who are going to kick off the campaign, uh, we'll see Dinamo uh, for Douala taking on RS Fortuna. Just to know that Dinamo have been the club and making the biggest signings uh, during this transfer uh, window as they have bought almost all the finest stars in the MTN Elite One Championship, the likes of Eta Bawak, uh, the likes of Emmanuel Mahob, a star stock collection as they make their return to elite football business. They were recently flying their trade in the last season's MTN Elite Two Championship. They recently okay. got a promotion and they're looking forward to making a very big entrance into the league. And to do so, they brought in the finest in Cameroon Elite Football to show for that game at Dinamo versus RS Fortuna. I will be staged at the Reunification Stadium in Douala, it will be at 4 p.m. on October 4, 2023. More exciting fixtures are still on the menu as the lead one returns on Wednesday, October 4. It will equally uh, see Astres of Douala taking on Egle Royal de la Menua. Egle, who are just from getting the blessings of yes, the uh, chief of uh, uh, Bafo Village. They will be looking forward uh, to see how that blessings will play out when they welcome Astres. That will be on October 4 still, and uh, they will have to do so at, uh, of course, uh, 4 p.m. at uh, the reunification stadium as they are poised to making a big return to Cameroon elite football. And on October 5, uh, the elite one continues. It will see uh, Union Sportif uh, taking on Gazelle FA that will be staged at uh, 3.30 p.m. at the start in Bapelepe here in uh, Douala. Both teams also looking forward uh, to a first win in their first appearance at this uh, top flight football season in uh, Cameroon over at the Bamenzi Stadium out there in uh, Bafu Sam at 3:30 uh, p.m. Uh, PWG of Bamenda, the Abakwa Boys, as yes, they are fondly yes. called, they will be taking on Bangutu some Buddha. Recall Bibiana Shinija that the they recently time. sacked their coach yes. Constantine Bib after mm -hmm. losing at the Cameroon Cup Finals uh, to Fuvu of Baham. They have now signed a new coach, Anke Diodonel, who will be disputing his first game with uh, PWG of Bamenda. He will be looking forward uh, to making a 
big uh, appearance at the uh, Bako Boys uh, dugout as the fans will be looking forward to see him uh, doing his great job in that first game against uh, Bambutus of Buddha. More interesting fixtures will see Avion uh, taking on UMS Dilum at 1.30 p.m. at the Bamenzi uh, Stadium. Fast forward to the Rumdaja Stadium out there in uh, Garoa. It will be at 4 p.m. on October 5. It is the Cameroon Double Domestic Champions Cotton okay. Sport of Garoa after clinching the Elite One. Yes. And the Super and now Cup. We have to, oh, this is going to be a huge one. I hope everyone is taking the rendezvous. It is going to be a huge one indeed. After yes. winning the Super Cup, still they now boast of two trophies in the Cameroon uh, footballing landscape. They will be defending at the Elite One Championship and to do so, their first game this season uh, will be against Star Drena. And even better news for the Cottonites mm -hmm. is that they will be playing this game at their very own backyard, the Rumda Jazz Stadium. Hence, no you need for say. errors. Yes. No need for errors, <laughs> Vivian Nashidita. They will they have to do have so. They just have to get this one right. They will have to get this one right. And coupled with the fact that they have a new trainer of a French descent, Daniel Bread, who recently backed his first title out there with a Cotton Sport, that is the Super Cup. They will be feeling exciting and he will be poised to also continue his winning streak with the Cottonites as they take yes, on a start right now at the room that just did you, Vivian And there is no way we can leave without you telling me about this wrestling bout between Gano, of course, and Fury. Exactly, Vivian mm -hmm. Before we get into that bigger boxing bout oh, that yes. every Cameroonian is anticipating October 28, uh, 2023, let's get a quick uh, teaser uh, with a recent agreement signed by the Cameroon Football Federation and the World Football Governing Body, FIFA. It is a talent scout initiative uh, where FIFA will be selecting some young, uh, talented uh, footballing uh, Cameroonian youth uh, to train uh, to uh, emerge at the 2027 such that the uh, Cameroon's uh, Lionesses and the Lions will have continuity in the national selection that oh. is grooming the young uh, generation yes. uh, to become the finest Abubakas in the future of by course. the year 2026 and 2027 such that they keep in that form as they continue. Hence, the Cameroon Football Federation, they had a, a meeting at the Feka Foot uh, Technical Headquarters out there in Oza where they, with the representative of, of the World Football Governing Body, they were able to map out this agreement. We shall be following that at the drill our viewers more in our subsequent newscast and now the big boxing bouts oh i can't wait for that come on give me more of it that has been making much uh, rounds and waves on social yes. network Viviana Shinita <laughs> since the announcing of this epic class that francis ngano yeah. versus world boxing champ champion uh, tyson fury undefeated tyson fury after over a uh, 43 a uh, boxing about uh, does uh, francis ngano has what it takes to knock out tyson fury that is the million question Cameroonians and boxing fans are now asking uh, after the face of ceremony we saw uh, Tyson Fury uh, making it public to the press that if he doesn't submit uh, Francis Ngannou during that boxing bout he should uh, be making a mockery of the media should make mockery of him uh, Tyson Fury should he lose to uh, uh, Francis Ngannou can oh. you imagine the confidence there <laughs> that Viviana is Chirita? overconfidence, I, overconfidence. Guess. <laughs> I, I guess that has to do uh, with the fact that he is undefeated as he stands in its total uh, career about out there in a uh, kick uh, in a boxing in the French uh, boxing. Uh, just to note, uh, Bibiana Shinita uh, Francis Ngano has been in training for a while now. He is trained by the finest, of course. It is uh, Mike Tyson, yes. a former boxer in his capacity. He also knows he is also a Tyson, uh, Bibiana Shinita. Mike yes. Tyson, Mike so Tyson he, is he, training another Tyson. He's training, <laughs> he's training Francis Ngano to tackle is another definitely, Tyson. Yes. So only a Tyson would know how to bend a Tyson. <laughs> that so is it. That, uh, Mike Tyson effects gives us uh, the hope that Francis Ngannou can actually pull this off. Uh, for those uh, who don't know when this is going to be staged, it is going to be on October 28th in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. And I bet you that news will be all bought out uh, to make sure that our viewers get that fight uh, to the fullest for their viewing pleasure. Oh my God, this October seems to be a very hectic month so exactly. far as world is concerned. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is another edition of Cameroon Today. This time, we know know that news of course continues here on dash news we will be calling on this platform of course someone who's been waiting already she does not joke with her time and that is the person who is going to be presenting the prime time news you know that news on dash news is continuous and that is the reason for which we have her here who is going to be talking to us in just a moment welcome on the platform primera jones 
in Bibiana Street of Vuma. How are you doing today? As I always say, it's always a pleasure being with you. Oh, it really is a pleasure being here with you. Now, I want to find out what are the top stories you have. Is there something pertinent that I heard earlier? We spoke about entrepreneurship with women. Uh, yes, Bibiana Street of Vuma. Today we are going to be talking about entrepreneurship, but mm -hmm. not male entrepreneurship, but female entrepreneurship. And the first international entrepreneurship fair session, which was organized today in Dua. Mind you, it is an opportunity for women all of our Central African um, countries to come present your goods, to come present what they do as women and how they can promote and encourage each other. It was a, let me hold your hand, we hold our hands and make Africa uh, a beautiful place. People from Equatorial Guinea were present, Guinea, Guinea were present, we had chat. Women all over were there. We even have people who were selling shawarma who were there. No matter how little your business was, you were all encouraged to be present at the international uh, fair trade there that was organized at Best Western, precisely in Douala. Oh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. This is where we come to the end of this edition of Cameroon today. But we would leave you at one part of Cameroon, which is in the northwest region. We will take you to the Bafut people, and that is where we will come to the end of the news. We will leave you, of course, with a premier at ball while we end at the Cameroon Today newscast. Meanwhile, in, in Bafut, where you would want to eat at you, and of course, the people with the fondly called Seven Kata will say, Goodbye in the mother tongue, of course, full of full. Mia, I've been a bye bye. Have a pleasant evening.